I just got a new backplate and wing setup, so I thought I'd make a video for you guys showing you all the steps I take to set up a new backplate and wing system before I take it on its first dive. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name is James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces out there. I hope you're all doing really, really well. We're back with yet another in our series of quick tips videos. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how I go about setting up a new back plate and wing. Now, I just got a new ST35 system from Hollis. This is not a sponsored video. However, I will be reviewing the system once I've had a chance to dive it, but I just figured as I was unpackaging it, I might as well jump in and make a quick tips video that applies to any backplate and wing setup that you might be investing in, and just the sort of tweaks and changes that I want to make before I put it on for my first dive. So I've got it set up on a tank over there, follow me over to the workbench, and we'll get started. So this is the ST35 single tank backplate and wing setup from Hollis, new for 2021. Uh, it ships completely assembled already. If you're buying a, your first backplate and wing setup, it may be modular and you may need to assemble it. In which case, well, that's really a different video. I'll probably have to make one about how to thread a harness through a backplate and how to assemble a single tank adapter. But what we're going to start with here is presuming that you've put your backplate and wing together, you're mounting it onto a cylinder for the first time, and you want to make some tweaks and adjustments to make sure that it fits you well and that all your accessory mounting points are where they need to be. I always find that it helps to set up a backplate and wing system mounted onto a cylinder already. Uh, I would also recommend that your cylinder has an actual valve on it because that's not going to work very well, but you get the point. Um, so slip the tank band cylinders over. I've adjusted these already, but just to show you how to do that, what you're going to want to do is thread the cam band back through the first slot there, and then this is your tightening device. You're going to want to get that as tight as possible first then thread back through the first slot and then when you pull it over that's going to give you the tension that you want to get as tight as possible and that's just a case of sealing off with the velcro there now you want to get this as tight as absolutely possible the absolute best way to do it is to get it wet first because remember that nylon webbing will expand when it's wet. But for the sakes of this video demonstration, I just wanted to show you that threading part. The next thing to do then is to try it on and make sure you've got the harness to fit you as you would like it, bearing in mind what exposure protection you want to wear underneath. And the goal of this really is to get that belt buckle into the correct position. Now, there are basically two schools of thought here. You can either have the belt buckle on the left of the crotch strap or on the right as you're wearing it. And I prefer mine on the left, the right as you're viewing it. And basically the pros and cons are, do you want it to be easy to get off in an emergency versus will it come undone on a dive? Now, if you have it on the left-hand side and it comes undone during a dive, basically the whole system is going to fall to pieces. But that has happened exactly zero times to me in my career diving a backplate and wing. So I prefer to have it on the left-hand side and that way it's easier to get off if there was an emergency situation. So all you do there is once you've got the belt buckle into the right place, finish threading the waist strap through. Don't worry about the excess, we'll take care of that momentarily. And then yeah, try it on. Put the waist strap, bring the crotch strap up, thread it through the waist strap, get it nice and tight. And on the subject of crotch straps there, you do not want that crotch strap to be doing any kind of work. It shouldn't have any strain on it. It should have a good amount of slack. It's only there to stop the whole system from riding up on you. Once I'm happy with how the harness fits, the next thing to do is to get my hip D-rings as far back as possible. I want them as far back so that when I mount accessories to them, they're not dangling down in front of me. I want to keep as clean a front as possible. That really is the main advantage and attraction of diving a backplate and wing setup. So I'll slide both hip, hip D-rings as far back as possible, but still allowing me uh, enough space that I can work the harness a little bit to loosen it slightly to get into it. Um, just just give me that little bit of play there. Also, you're going to see there that this Hollis system comes with some tubing already installed on the uh, shoulder straps. If you don't have that already, you're going to want to add a little bungee loop there. 
Next, I'm gonna mount my cutting device. Uh, that just goes over the belt buckle and sits on my waist strap. And then we need to create some loops to mount the DSMB. So all I'm gonna do here is take some of the thicker size uh, shock cord, a bungee cord, uh, and just make a very simple set of loops with an overhand knot. Um, always measure it, always have the SMB on hand to make sure it's not too loose. And then you're just gonna feed those through from the back of the back plate. And that allows you to mount your DSMB vertically where it's out of the way, not dangling, but easily accessible. The next thing you wanna do is grab yourself a double ender, slip the harness back on. We're gonna check that the shoulder D-rings are exactly where they're supposed to be. The best way to do this is just to hold your arms out to the side, bring your hands in with the double ender and make sure that naturally that double ender clips onto the D-ring without you having to search up or down for it. If it's not exactly where it, you expect them to be, you're gonna to have to adjust the position of those D-rings. All that's left to do then is to attach the rest of my accessories. I wanna make sure my light secures to my left shoulder D-ring and is secure through the surgical tubing. I'm gonna clip off my GoPro to the other shoulder D-ring, make sure my cutting device, my SMB and my reel are all attached. And this is about the time I'd start to think about waiting. The nice thing about diving a steel backplate in tropical water is I don't need very much weight at all. But this is the time you probably wanna attach some trim pockets to your cam bands in the back if that's something you need. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this helps you if you're investing in maybe your first backplate and wing setup or maybe just your next backplate and wing setup. Just some of the things I like to check and go through for proper fitting, for accessory mounting, and all that good stuff to make sure I'm fully comfortable in my new gear that you've invested your hard-earned money in. I hope you enjoyed this quick tips video. If you did, drop me a line in the comment section below. I always appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. If you did learn something from this video, a thumbs up is also so always appreciated and doesn't cost you a thing. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your quick tips video for this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.